Hey guys, today I want to answer a pretty simple question that I've gotten a few times. What's the proper order of equipment in an aquaponics system? So I want to give you some tips and tricks as far as the equipment and setup goes in an aquaponics system and give you some basic terminology if you're new to the aquaponics world. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode from New Agrarian on YouTube. We're all about aquaponics, hydroponics, and agriculture. In today's episode, we're talking about aquaponics system components. So let's get into it. So the first part in an aquaponics system should definitely be your fish tank. Now, what can you use for a fish tank? Honestly, anything that's strong enough to hold water without flexing is qualified to be a fish tank in aquaponics. So we use these polyethylene tanks. You could also use IBC water totes. You could use 50 gallon water drums. You could use totes that you buy from Ace Hardware, the square totes, as long as they're rigid enough to hold water. If it'll hold water without breaking down, it is a candidate for a fish tank in aquaponics. Water exits all of our tanks through the use of a solids lifting overflow. I have a video explaining that. And I also have a video walking through the parts of our system. Make sure you check both those videos out. I'll put them in the description below. The scale of your system is going to determine the size of these tanks. You just need to move water from the fish tanks out. So let's keep looking. So the next part in any aquaponics system, we're gonna call the primary filtration. In our system, we use something called settling tanks, specifically radial flow settling tanks. I also did a video in the past explaining how these work. Check that out. Basically, the second component in any aquaponics system after the fish tanks should be a filter to remove large particles, typically the ones that can settle to the bottom, hence settling tank. So we use these 50 gallon cone bottom tanks. You can use simply five gallon buckets, you can use trash cans, you can use 50 gallon water drums. Anything that will hold water and has enough volume to support your system can be used as a settling tank. But the second component generally is a primary filter to remove the large particles produced so by fish. So the third component that we're gonna talk about is actually optional, but this is called secondary filtration. So I think aquaponics systems are much more successful when they have a secondary filter on them. You definitely can do aquaponics without this, but you're gonna to have to clean the other areas of your system more frequently. So our method of secondary filtration is called a clarifier, which removes the small particles. Our clarifier just uses these sheets of Matala media combined with some bags of gravel to collect small particles. There's a drain on this thing and we just hose it out and we drain it along with our solid waste. You can use anything for this that has fine surface area because a lot of these particles that you're removing are actually suspended and they are too small to settle to the bottom of a settling tank. But I think aquaponics systems are much more successful when they have some type of secondary solids filtration. Let's keep going. So once your water is free of particles, using particle filtration, the next step in an aquaponics system is called chemical filtration. We're going to break this down into two parts, biofiltration and degassing slash mineralization. Both of these things are optional in an aquaponics system, but they definitely help the system to function better. And I say optional because biofiltration will actually occur on any surface, which is in an area where there's oxygen. So in aquaponics, the deep water culture beds provide a very large site for biofiltration to occur, which is why you typically don't need a specific biofilter, but I have it here because it also functions as a degassing tank. So basically what I'm saying is this is the tank that's right after our solids filtration, the primary and secondary filters. Now those tanks are basically anaerobic decomposing, very, very bad for water quality areas. And inside those tanks, there is solid waste that's breaking down. And this solid waste is releasing carbon dioxide, methane, hydrogen sulfide, very, very toxic gases. So this water that comes into your next component is going to have those gases in it. A biofilter slash degassing tank will aerate that water and push out those harmful, stinky gases into the atmosphere. So no, this is not needed, but I like to have it because I like to add that additional layer of degassing and biofiltration before the water goes into the deep water culture beds. Biofiltration is the process of bacteria breaking down ammonia into nitrate. Degassing is the process of pushing those harmful gases into the atmosphere. Some people add what's called a mineralization tank. This is basically a tank that has solid matter, but it is aerated. Basically picture a mineralization tank as a settling tank 
that's aerated. So what they'll do is they'll actually have a separate tank, the mineralization tank that has waste in it, and they'll oxygenate it to increase the aerobic breakdown of those solids to fully extract all of the nutrients in them. So the idea with a mineralization tank is that rather than the waste just sitting here to be flushed out, you're collecting it, you're oxygenating it, and you're extracting every last bit of nitrogen from that waste before removing the solid matter. So after your water is relatively particle free and harmful gas free, you want to put it into your plant growing component. So we use a deep water culture bed. You could throw it into an NFT. You could throw it into a vertical farm, whatever you want. That's kind of where aquaponics is fun. You can kind of get creative and do whatever you want with that nutrient rich water. So the nutrients are extracted from the waste before the water enters into your plant growing area. This can also be used as a biofilter. The plant roots provide great surface area for bacteria. We oxygenate this bed as well to encourage the breakdown of nitrogenous chemicals. I also posted a video on how to make a deep water culture bed at home. So check that out if you want to make one. So without a secondary filter, usually you'll have a nice buildup of particles in here, which can get on your roots and rot them. And it's also just dirty in general. So the more you can filter your water before this point, the better your system will function down the line. The water in here, nutrient rich, and particle free ideally. So after the water runs through all of your filters, your plant production area, it's going to either end up at a sump tank or a water return pump. A sump tank is basically the lowest point in an aquaponic system. Typically it's buried underground and it's a very large reservoir of water and can kind of act as a safety net as far as things overflowing. Everything in the system would drain into a sump tank in the ground which would have the water return pump in it to go back to whatever component in the system that you'd like, usually a fish tank. If your system is on concrete like mine, I use the deep water culture beds themselves as sump tanks and I just pump it from the deep water culture beds back to the fish tanks. So the water coming out of your return pump should ideally be particle free and reduce in chemicals. This is the water that goes back to your fish tanks and you can do a few things with it. Some systems have something called a base addition tank. So basically it's a tank that's simply sits off to the side here and it just trickles in right back here. So basically the water goes up into the tank and it comes back in here. That's the spot where they will add any of their pH adjusting chemicals so that they slowly integrate into the system. You can also add another filter to this water going back into your system, whether that be a bead filter, a sand filter, a cartridge filter, UV sterilizer. You can add one type of final filtration to this water as it enters your fish tanks. So that's pretty much it guys. That's the proper order of the general parts in an aquaponics system. Fish production, solids filtration, chemical filtration, plant production, repeat. So I hope that helped you. If it did, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and I'll catch you in the next episode.